Can I have your attention, please? I'd like to bring this uh, regular city commission meeting to, to order Monday, October 7th, 2013. Uh, would everyone rise uh, for the uh, invocation and stay standing for the pledge? And what I'd like to ask you to do is a moment of, of silence. One of our uh, employees passed away this past weekend, Mr. Ronnie Watson, 18 years plus in public services. He will be missed as a friend and a colleague. So would you please bow your heads in a silent prayer, please. Amen. And uh, if you have a chance, we have a picture of Ronnie in action over there with some friends and all. And uh, please keep an eye on him on the way out and say amen to him, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Get an approval of the agenda Mr. Mayor. as amended. We have one um, amendment to the agenda to add um, the White Cane Safety Month proclamation under special presentations as item D. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Also approval of uh, reading pro proposed ordinances and resolutions by title only. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 No. Opposed? And with that, we'd like to go on to special presentations. Uh, item A, Alachua Police Department Breast Cancer Awareness Presentation, Mr. Sandusky, Officer Sandusky, in a suit. <laughs> good evening, Detective Sandusky, the Alachua Police Department. Uh, good evening, Mayor, City Commissioners, Madam City, May, um, city Manager, Madam City Attorney. As most of you probably know, the City of Alachua is celebrating breast cancer awareness during the month of October, as is evident by all the decorations and a lot of people wearing pink. Breast cancer affects hundreds of thousands of women each year. With those numbers, the chances are high that someone in this room has been affected by breast cancer at some point in their lives, whether it be themselves, a family member, or a close friend. According to the American Cancer Society, the chance that breast cancer will be the cause of a woman's death stands at 3% a vast improvement from past years. This improvement is said to be a result of early detection, improved treatments, and increased awareness. We at the Alachua Police Department have committed to do our part to increase awareness of this cancer which affects so many of our families and friends. In addition to wearing the pink bracelets on our wrists and the pink pins on our uniforms, we decided to make our support for the cause known throughout the city and the county alike. At this time, I would like to direct your attention to the front of City Hall for the unveiling of our largest token of support. So at this point, I'm gonna have to have everybody stand up and walk outside to the front of City Hall. Okay, anybody would like to go out there with us, please join us. And everybody is welcome to come out.
I know. I know. I know. Jesse must be finished because he didn't come back in. So. Can I have your attention again, please? And uh, one thing I forgot to ask, if you have a cell phone, uh, would you please either turn it down or turn it off? And if you need to make a phone call, please step out in the lobby. And with that, we're going to go on to item B, which is Youth Advisory Council Certificates. Mr. Bukhari. Adam Bakari, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Manager, Attorney. I wanted to take the time this evening to offer a presentation. Uh, if the mayor will join me down here for a presentation of certificates to the five members of the City of Alachua's Youth Advisory Council. These members were appointed back in, uh, I think it was March or so in 2012, and they've been serving for that time, working really hard, reaching out to other youth in the community to find out what they could do to help improve the lives of youth, um, which is the the vision this commission has uh, tasked them and charged them to do. Uh, they attended on uh, Saturday, August 7th, the, city of the Florida League of Cities uh, annual conference in which there was a youth conference there, and they participated in a day-long event which had uh, multiple sessions that they participated in. They were wonderful ambassadors of the city, and as part of that, they received uh, certificates of distinction, which I'll now turn to the mayor to present, and they are all here. Okay. Our first uh, youth council member here is Chad Osborne. Andrew Monday. Bennett Myers. <coughs> Holly New. And Joni Perkins. And Mr. Mayor, I did tell them if you were okay with they may want to say a few words, but they speak a lot at their meetings, so I don't know if they're up for it. Well, I watched them in action down at the uh, Florida League of Cities in Orlando, and they did a great job in representing the city of Alachua. And they weren't so shy down there, but uh, would, would any of you like to say anything uh, on your behalf? Well, I, I will tell you also, I appreciate these kids stepping up and representing um, uh, the city at uh, Santa Fe High School. They've held some forums already where they had people, uh, the kids come in in the auditorium and discuss issues and they, they equate themselves very, very well, and I really appreciate that. The uh, involvement will uh, carry on throughout their life, and hopefully that someday they'll be leaders at a higher level, so I really do appreciate that. And this is one last request. Are you sure you don't want to say anything? Go ahead, come on. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity. It's been a really eye-opening experience, and for everyone that's put in a lot of effort, um, Adam and Ben and Charmaine, I just wanted to say thank you from all of us and that it's been really awesome and it's made my junior and senior year um, really unique. So thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I could uh, make a plug uh, real quick, give a plug. 
<laughs> up here. Um, this uh, group we've added, I think they voted last, uh, last meeting to add three more members to the, uh, to the council. Um, I know there's another young lady that's interested and she's got an application. If you know somebody that's uh, high school age, ninth through 12th grade, they're interested in civics, local government, meeting people, um, understanding uh, how their government runs. A lot of people think it's in Washington, but it hits you first right here at home in Alachua and where you live. So I wanted to thank them for their service to the, to the council and you represent us very, very well and you did so at the Florida League of Settings Conference. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to say anything? With that, once again, thank you. And we'd like to move on to item C, Public Power Week. Mr. Mike New. Mr. New. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Commission, Madam City Manager, Madam City Attorney. My name is Mike New from Public Services Department. And tonight I am presenting to you which, what turns out to be just about one of my favorite presentations every year. Um, it is a chance to recognize our um, very dedicated electric uh, department staff and uh, do a short presentation, very short I promise, uh, to the city commission about what uh, the value that our electric system brings to the city of Alachua and to share about Public Power Week and the public recognition that, that goes along with that. This is the 27th annual Public Power Week, and it is celebrated by more than 2,000 public power communities uh, across the nation. The Public Power Week is put together by the American Public Power Association, which is a service organization for community-owned and state-owned electric utilities. The, the Public Power Week is just one of many ways that APPA promotes public power uh, awareness and the dedicated individuals that serve in public power across the nation. The city of Alachua is one of 34 utilities um, in the state of Florida that are municipally owned. We're one of the smaller uh, ones. They range in size from the city of Jacksonville, which is an extremely large, I think the third largest municipally owned public power agency in the nation, uh, to as small as Clewiston or Mount um, Dora or Bluntstown, which have um, less than a thousand customers and range in location from Key West all the way to Bluntstown. Collectively, FMEA or public members, uh, public power agencies in the state of Florida um, are the state's third largest power uh, source of electricity around the state. So we play a very vital role across the state. Within the city of Alachua, our electric system consists of staff and infrastructure necessary to provide power to more than 4,300 customers we have a dedicated staff of nine full-time professionals committed to ensuring that our electric system infrastructure serves our res residents most cost effectively. These heroes, and I don't use that term lightly, they really are heroes. It is, it is um, work that is 24 seven. They're always on call. Someone's always on call. They always come in during the worst types of conditions and uh, um, there's never a, there, there can do, there's never a moment where they said we can't do this um, or, or they, they know the steps to take to make sure that our folks have reliable power and that they get the power restored as quickly as possible in the event, in the very rare event that there is a power outage within Alachua. Um, just a couple highlights, and I'm going to go through a brief presentation, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll try to run through that real quickly and touch on some of the other highlights, and then I'd like to introduce you to our staff um, and read a proclamation, or have the mayor read a proclamation. So um, this presentation you've seen before, so I will not go through every line item, line item of it. This year's theme for public power is the home power advantage. Um, there are some statistics um, that indicate where we are within the state of Florida, uh, number of customers we have, and, and some of our financials. Um, it's interesting to note that over the last um, 10 years, we've had about a 3.5% growth rate, both in cost customers and in sales, although that's <coughs> flattened out over the last three years. There's brief history. City of Alachua began providing electric power to its residents in 1950, primarily because no one else would. There was an electric generator in town that made ice during the day, and someone says, why don't we use that generator to, make, uh, to burn the street lights at night? And so that is how the city of Alachua got into the public power business and has been doing so, I guess now, for 98 years. We're coming up on our 100 year celebration. 
So, and then more details, uh, City of Alachua uh, originally just purchased power from public, uh, from Florida Power Corp to serve its customers. Went on to buy entitlements or portions of two nuclear power plants within the state of Florida and built their own substation and major feeders and now are planning to upgrade their substation. Here's a little bit about the infrastructure that we own. Again, I mentioned that we own a substation. We have one substation with two power transformers. We purchased the third power transformer for the expansion of that substation. It'd be a large multi-million dollar project. Some more photos. Um, we distribute power from that substation to our residents um, through three major feeders and miles and miles of primary overhead electric service and underground circuits. Um, we have, a, as I mentioned previously, we have a, a direct staff of nine, but they're also supported by folks for meter readers, warehouse attendants, and administration staff. That includes me. Uh, we have a lot of uh, very good formal programs going on for our staff, including a formal training, ship, uh, training program that puts each of our trainees through an apprenticeship program. We uh, provide progressive training for our line workers to make sure they're up to speed with with current state-of-the-art technology. Um, our folks, um, well, first of all, they receive safety awards most every year for zero loss time uh, accidents, and we'll receive one for 2012 at the end of this presentation. Uh, also, we participate in state rodeos, and I guess it's been a few years back, but we, we actually placed in the top three with it, uh, for several categories within the lineman's rodeo. Uh, these are some of the preventive maintenance programs we have to uh, have ongoing to make sure that we provide reliable power and that our system infrastructure maintains the highest integrity. Uh, we have a very aggressive capital improvement program um, that is only constrained by our rates. We try to maintain the lowest rates possible. Um, and generally, I find that the capital improvement program is our, our appetites or what our eyes are a little bit bigger than our stomach. We usually bite off a little bit more than we chew every year, but that, that keeps us, that keeps us uh, hopping. We have all the, the state-of-the-art equipment, most thankfully to the city commission that's willing to fund those enterprises. That equipment is very expensive, uh, but we have state-of-the-art equipment to maintain our electric system. There's a visual image of our service territory. City of Alachua is depicted in the shade of green, covers about 22 square miles. And just one interesting bullet is, is that um, there is no customer choice. Um, every property owner on uh, their property is designated a service territory, whether and in the city of Alachua, there are four of us, it's city of Alachua, Duke Energy, Clay Electric Cooperative, and Gainesville Regional Utilities. And currently, we are the lowest cost service provider within our city limits. Even, even lower than Clay, who has recently raised their rates. Uh, these are some growth trends that just show that um, we've experienced 3.5% growth over the last 10 years. This is how our revenues are apportioned. You can see that 35% of our, our electric sales are related to uh, residential sales, and a little over 60% are related to non-residential commercial industrial sales. These, this is a, a pie chart showing how our expenses are. It's interesting to note there that 67% of our expenses are associated with wholesale power. It's just a straight pass through of the power that we purchased either from Gainesville Re Regional Utilities primarily or through our two entitlements um, uh, for nuclear power plants. And one thing that you can see about that, the second highest line item is our transfer to general fund. When you're trying to affect ways to reduce cost, and the 78% of your costs are kind of fixed, it's really hard to uh, adjust personnel cost, operating cost, or capital outlay and significantly affect cost. I mean, really, it comes down to negotiating good wholesale power contracts if you want to provide affordable rates for your residents. Uh, we have a general fund transfer that averages 10 to 13% of our electric system revenues. Um, this year, it's a little over $1.6 million, which equates to 18% of the total general fund revenue. So the electric <coughs> system plays a significant role in the funding for our general fund activities. Some details about bulk power purchase. Um, prior to 1987, we purchased from Progress Energy. 
since 1987, we've been in a long continuing contract with Gainesville Regional Utilities that currently runs at least through 2015, takes us through 2016 to get out of it if we elect to do so. There's some details about the nuclear uh, power plant at Crystal River. That plant has been placed offline as a schedule for decommissioning. The city of Alachua's last power from that facility will be December of 2013. So we're about two months, three months from the end of our power um, uh, receipts from Crystal River. We also own a slice of a nuclear power plant uh, near Fort Pierce, Florida, um, and it's got at least 20 more years that we'll be receiving energy from that facility. Um, Rate-wise, this is the August 2013 electric rate comparison. These are residential rates. Uh, we ranked 14th out of 34, and you can see now they're really tightly bunched. Three or four years ago when I showed you that, there was a really big spread. Uh, but over the last four or five years, the industry's gotten really competitive and everyone's rates are really um, packed in together. Other benefits are um, street lighting. The, the electric system provides for more than $130,000 annually in street lighting expenses, both on public streets. And we employ nine full-time staffs um, directly by the electric system and 12 full-time staffs indirectly by having our own electric system. And we assist all other areas and departments within the city in um, different community events and uh, working within our downtown redevelopment district. These are some of our future initiatives that, that we've got either planned in our CIP or just planned in general that we'd like to undertake to continue to be the service provider of choice for the city of Alachua's residents. And with that, I would be happy to take on any questions. And I, I believe we have a proclamation. I'd like to, for the, the mayor to read into the record. Questions or comments? I, I, I truly appreciate all the hard work you and everyone on the staff does on that. Um, I know I yell at these guys when I go by. I say, get to work. <laughs> They're really working hard all the time. and. Uh, I, I appreciate all that, all that, and the knowledge they have. Uh, with that, I'd like to read the proclamation. Whereas the residents of Alachua place a high value on local control over community services, and therefore have chosen to operate a community-owned, locally controlled, not-for-profit electric utility as consumers and owners of the electricity utility, have a great say in utility operations and policies. And whereas the city of Alachua electric system provides homes, businesses, social service, and local government agencies with reliable, efficient, and cost-effective electricity employing sound business practices and designed to ensure the best possible service at not-for-profit rates. And whereas the City of Alachua electric system is a valuable community asset that contributes substantially to the well-being of local residents through the energy efficiency, customer service, environmental protection, economic development and safety awareness. And whereas the City of Alachua Electric System is a dependable and trustworthy utility whose local governance provides many consumer protections and continues to making our community a better place in which to live and work as well as helping protect the global environment. Now therefore be it resolved that the City of Alachua Electric uh, System will continue to bring uh, low cost, safe, reliable energy to community homes and businesses just as it has since 1950, the year when the utility was created to serve residents of Alachua, and be it further resolved that the community joins hands with more than 2,000 other public power systems in the United States in celebration of public power and recognition of the city of Alachua's electric system is good for consumers, business, and community, and the nation. And be further resolved that I give Kerper Mayor of the City of Alachua do hereby proclaim the week of August, I mean, I'm sorry, October 6th through the 12th be designated the 27th annual Public Power Week in order to honor the City of Alachua electric system for its contributions to the community and to make the consumer owners, policymakers, and employees more aware of its con contributions to their well being and how it makes their lives powerful and invite all Alachua residents and businesses, civic groups and government agencies and other organizations to participate. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I, I would just reiterate, the city of Alachua is truly fortunate to own its electric system. It's a real difference maker for us. And uh, um, we, the public power is a great thing for, for us and the state of Florida. I'd like to invite you down to present our safety award to our staff. And while you're coming down, I'd, I'd like to introduce um, nine individuals that I'm very honored and privileged to work with that, that work directly for our electric system. And, and if you guys would, would you please stand when I call your name? And then it, after I'm complete, would you, with the rest of the audience, join me in recognizing these, these workers for their hard work with a round of applause? First, I'd like to introduce Jeff Morgan. He's our electric system superintendent, electric system supervisor. I'd like to introduce Donnie Rollerson. He's our electric system crew leader. I'd like to introduce Andy Lindsay. David Sykes, David Smith, and Billy Jenkins. They're all electric line workers. I'd like to introduce Robbie Pierce and Benjamin Copeland. They're electric line worker apprentices. And our newest member, Mr. Josh Lee, is an electric line worker trainee. Would you please stand and join me in, in recognizing these gentlemen? And with that, uh, from the uh, Florida Municipal Electric Association 2012 Safety Award, Category A, perfect record. Thank you very much, guys. I really do appreciate it. And uh, would anyone, how did I know that? You know, you got a camera now. Wait a minute, face the camera over here. <laughs> he just saunders in like he's not in a hurry and all this. I Absolutely. Y'all come up, please. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, while they're coming up, we do need to recognize that uh, Mr. New rags on his people, but he also pl plays a significant leadership role with the Florida Municipal Electric Association. He's an officer and one of the leaders in the state, so we really appreciate Mike's efforts. With that, I'd like to go ahead and, and uh, make a, um, item D, uh, presentation of proclamation to the Lotcher Lions Club for White Cane Week. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this uh, Adam Bukhari, City of Alachua. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Manager, Attorney. Uh, this is a presentation by the commission. It's a proclamation to be read by the mayor uh, pro uh, proclaiming October 2013 as White Cane Safety Awareness Month in the City of Alachua. Uh, as you know, the Alachua Lions Club has been sponsoring the White Cane Walk for a couple years now, and it's been sponsored by the Alachua County Council for the Blind for nearly a decade. And uh, once again, the walk is taking place this Saturday. Uh, it begins at 9 a.m. at the old former City Hall property and ends at the current Lions Club property. It's a two-hour event, and residents are encouraged to attend and participate. It really is a great experience to kind of learn what a blind or visually impaired individual goes through on a daily basis um, when try, trying to traverse um, our landscapes here, even on a sidewalk. Um, so we encourage people to attend that. And with that, Mr. Mayor, staff request that you read the proclamation into the record. Yes. Whereas the Alachua Lions Club is a service club that empowers volunteers to serve their community, including the challenge to prevent blindness and improve eye health and eye care. And whereas 
The use of guide dog or white cane is universally recognized as a mobility aid for the blind. And whereas state, <coughs> state of Florida statute 316.1301, also known as white cane law, requires the vehicles to stop when an individual guided by a dog or carrying a white cane is in crossing the public street or highway. And whereas October each year has been nationally designated as White Cane Safety Month, and whereas it is the desire of the members of the Lotro Lions Club to make the public aware that the White Cane Law and the necessity of its observance to assure the safety of individuals who are blind or visually impaired on the Lotro public streets. Therefore, now I give Kerper, by the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Alachua, do hereby proclaim October 2013 as White Cane Safety Month in the city of Alachua and invite all of our citizens to join me in assuring safety of individuals who are blind or visually impaired. Um, and with that, I'd like to also, uh, Mr. Hardacre and I are part of the Alachua Lions Club. Is anyone else a Lion member in, uh, in the audience? I would certainly, uh, oh, and Chief, Chief, I'm sorry. Yes, you are. Um, he keeps us straight at the, at the meetings. Um, I'd like to personally invite you all on Saturday, 9 a.m. at, uh, like I said, it's over there by actually where the, the uh, fire station is and the, and the uh, library. If you have never experienced a, uh, a blindfold over your eyes and someone leading you down the street uh, and hearing the traffic on 441, and, 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 and relying on that person to not run you into a tree or something like that, it's an experience you won't ever forget. So I appreciate if you all come out and experience that. With that, thank you very much. Thank you. With that, I'd like to go ahead and um, go to our comments from citizens on subject of choice. Uh, if you don't get a chance this time, we do have an opportunity at the end of the meeting and so let's open that up for uh, citizens' comments. Mr. Mayor, commissioners, staff, my name is Larry Nogle. My wife and I live in Turkey Creek. Over the past seven weeks, we have been denied the use of our own bedroom and the use of any outside facilities as far as our porch, our patio, or our backyard, due to the noise and stench from the Grec biomass plant. We, as residents of Turkey Creek, have sought relief from the Alachua Police Department, the Gainesville Police Department, the Alachua County Sheriff's Department, the City of Alachua, the City Commission of Gainesville, the Homeowners Association of Turkey Creek, every legislative representative from this area, and we've made numerous noise and nuisance reports, and even many times to the culprit, Greg themselves. To this date, almost everyone agrees that we do have a noise and air quality problem out at Turkey Creek due to the Greg plant. Uh, some of you and others have written supporting letters saying that, hey, you do have a problem. Even Greg recognized they have a problem. The city of Gainesville, they've recognized there is a problem. But in all essence, nothing has been solved as far as our problems as residents of Tur Turkey Creek and surrounding areas of Hay. After seven weeks of pure hell, we need our public servants to give us some rescue. Uh, tonight, we're asking the Alachua Commission, on behalf of your citizens, to enter into a nuisance lawsuit, lawsuit against Greck, the city of Gainesville, and GRU, which will seek an injunction to the curtail the operating hours of the biomass plant until these matters can be resolved. After seven weeks, we desperately need some relief. The Constitution of the United States guarantees the right of domestic tranquility, in which we have been denied for someone else's gain. 
this is not right. I thank you for your time, and I pray that you'll make the right decisions. Thank you. Would anyone else like to say something? Hello, commissioners. My name is Janice Youngblood. I moved to Turkey Creek in 2009 when I retired from education in Broward County. A good friend who was also a retired educator from Broward told me to move to God's country. I settled in Turkey Creek after looking at many homes in Gainesville. I love my neighbors, my neighborhood, and the city of Alachua. But I'm now revisiting my decision to live in an area that has a biomass plant so close by. No one has mentioned wildlife. I have a retention pond behind my house, and I love looking at the deer, the blue heron, the snowy egret, the hawks, and even the bald eagles that have showed up. I've not seen the heron or the deer in the last few weeks. I've also found that I've got deformed butterflies hatching out of their cocoons. Have no clue if that's part of what I'm uh, witnessing. I was delighted to know that when I moved that I could also turn my air conditioner off in October because I couldn't do that in Broward. Now I wonder if the noise and the particles that will be in the air will make it possible for me to do that this year. In the last two weeks, I have had to add an extra pill to try to decrease my high blood pressure. I also have sleep apnea, so I have a CPAC machine. Even with the white noise from the CPAC machine, I still can hear the biomass noise at night. I'm hoping and praying that um, the commission does something on this account. Thank you. Would anyone else like to comment? Good evening. Janie Hendricks from Turkey Creek. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Madam City Manager, Madam City Attorney. <clears throat> you know, we've, we've been known as the Good Life community for so many years, and I hope we don't lose that uh, because it, it is, as you've heard. Uh, such a wonderful place to live and um, I was hoping to live out my life uh, I plan on another 40 years um, in Turkey Creek but um, it, it's just oppressive it's debilitating uh, I can't work out of my house um, I'm, I'm glad we can't that I came tonight to hear um, what you're doing in terms of becoming more and more self-sufficient uh, as to electricity that's a wonderful thing and as soon as we can get out of that relationship with GRU I'd like to see see it happen I'd like to see it happen next week but uh, I'm hoping that we can um, sever that relationship as soon as possible and and rely on our on ourselves for power um, I, I hope that you really will take takes take some steps beyond a letter uh, some pressure really has to be uh, levied against the city of, of Gainesville um, because y you know, you've heard it before, property values, quality of life. It isn't just noise, it's particulates in the air. Um, there's been such a rush over the last number of years to um, um, build biomass plants nationwide and now the science is coming in and the experiences have shown that this biomasses were just a bad idea. Um, and, and spend a little time and Google, you'll see that the plants have shut down, they're sitting idle, uh, they've had to pay damages to, um, uh, to universities and municipalities. Um, so um, thank you, thank you for all you do and uh, thank, thank you. you. Good evening. My name is Frank Nasca. I'm also a resident of Turkey Creek and a retired mechanical contractor. I've been working, I believe, with Ben and giving him some information. I prepared a handout, and what this is is a synopsis of about 500 pages of a permit that Grec prepared for their permit to build this plant. And you can see right from the very beginning, Turkey Creek in Alachua has been very, very discreetly eliminated. You don't exist. Uh, well, you're seven miles north. 
And when you start reading this permit, and they, they've gone to a great extent, and having, you know, it's funny, they came to my house. I'm the pesky complainer to, to the city of Gainesville's police department. They came out, and a nice patrolman came out, and he came up with lower readings than they had on a bare piece of land. Of course, it depends on what type of instrument you're using. Having been in the environmental testing and involved with a company called Air Consulting Engineers for about 30 years now as one of their backers, I can make this data come out any way I want. This is probably the most true data that I gave you today off their thing that was done by ECT before anything ever happened. But when you, when you look at the plant and you start reading through here, you'll, you'll, you'll notice this thing. You would think you're in the middle of the woods someplace. The only thing that abuts this power plant are two warehouses, some radio towers, a boat storage rental, a shed, store, a shed sales thing, and a car wash. Now, we all know that's not true. And just take the time. I've eliminated pages and pages of gopher turtles and water runoff sheds and how we're going to do our retention ponds just so that you folks could just see a synopsis about how you've been eliminated. I was talking to a lady over here, and she said when this was rezoned that you have a co-agreement with Gainesville that you're supposed to share information. Well, I don't remember ever getting anything about this being done. Uh, I kind of blew it off. I had a discussion with Peggy at a, uh, at a, a political function when we were very involved in politics. And I said, you know, in Germany, they burn everything. This thing should be on Waldo Road. We can burn waste. We can eliminate, uh, I mean, it could be a multi-function biomass plant, not just a single source in our backyard. But uh, take a look at this in your time, and you'll see that you don't exist, and neither do we. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. staff. Uh, I just want to reiterate, I live in Turkey Creek. Can you state so your name for the record? Russ please? Paisano, I'm sorry. I uh, live in a four-unit condo, uh, two units away from Larry, who I blame for putting me there because he encouraged me to come out and move in there. And if we had our choice today, we'd be gone uh, because I don't think there's going to be any resolution to this, unfortunately. But I feel like I've aged 10 years in the past few weeks because I can't get a good night's sleep when that thing's running. We have asked time and again for Greg to give even the city of Gainesville, uh, and, and I think the city commission of Gainesville has asked too, a schedule of when that thing is gonna run so we could provide our own police or whatever out there to test it from our perspective. But uh, we had recently uh, put in uh, new, the highest quality uh, acoustical wind as you could uh, put in there and that doesn't help. We uh, just developed a nice, beautiful patio. My daughter lives next door to us. We were going to live there the rest of our lives. She's going to help take care of us. We got a beautiful patio back there, and we can't even enjoy it in the evenings now or during the day when Greg is running. Uh, I know enough about aviation to know that that's what it sounds like, a jet that's just stuck in the sand trap and you can't get out. Uh, when it's really bad, that's what it sounds like. And I don't think that there is an easy resolution to this. I certainly am, it's way over my head, but I appreciate y'all listening to our objections. I noticed that apparently Turkey Creek with 1,064 residents, we apparently constitute about a third of the total Lachway utility base. And uh, hopefully that will add some uh, strength to whatever y'all can do to help us. I don't know. Thank you though. Thank you. Good evening, my name's Tamara Robbins. Um, what a previous speaker was referring to is the intergovernmental coordination element in our comp plan. City of Gainesville has it, every municipality, including Alachua County, has it in their comprehensive plan. I served on the committee for months. Um, it was the Alachua County Coordination Element Committee, so in that portion of our comp plan and everyone else's it states that all developments are to we are to notify and Gainesville's comp plan specifically says the city of Alachua and 
all other municipalities within the county, including Alachua County. Our states that we are to notify High Springs, City of Gainesville, and all other municipalities, <coughs> including Alachua County, of all developments. So I also don't believe we are doing that as well. So had the City of Gainesville done that, I requested a copy of their, their mail-out notification sheet that they sent out in compliance with this element of their comprehensive plan. And not only was the city of Alachua not on it, Turkey Creek Homeowners Association was not on it. However, Staghorn, which is located in the city of Alachua and further down 441, was on it. So I believe it's pretty clear that the city of Gainesville is in violation of their comp plan. We were not legally notified of this development Therefore, we were not given the opportunity to have input into the public hearings. The city commission, I would have liked to, I'd like to think, would have taken this opportunity very seriously and hired a consultant to analyze the adverse impacts of having something um, of that sort of development that close to our borders. Um, that's the whole point of this element of the comp plan, is to have a comprehensive coordination with development so that we don't adversely impact our neighbors. And Mayor, I think you served on that committee. I don't know if it was you or Mayor Calderwood, but it was extensive, extensive process that we went through to try to avoid this exact situation. So I'd like to ask that this commission direct your city attorney to send the city of Gainesville a letter notifying them they are in violation of the comp plan by having approved this development without notifying the city of Alachua nor the adjacent homeowners per legal requirements and put them on notice that they are in violation of a comp plan. There are developments throughout this state that when the courts rule they are in violation of a comp plan, they have to tear it down. So there's a big condominium that was developed down in Miami that had that happen. There was a development in Tampa where that happened. When the courts ruled they were in violation of their comp plan, sorry, tear it down. So the comp plan has teeth, that's why we have it. It's the law. They violated it. And I'd suggest that we also do not continue to violate it by not notifying our neighbors of our developments as well, such as the um, Dollar General there in Hague. And one final thing I'd like to ask if you could clear up for me tonight was the site plan in the Oaks of Hague where the Laurel Oaks were removed and on the site plan, it said Laurel Oaks shall remain. And if you could please clear that up for me, I'd appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone like to else? Come on. Mayor and city commissioners. My name is Kimberly Sims. I live in Creekside Villas in Turkey Creek. Last week, I sent the Alachua City Commission the Gainesville City Commission, GPD, uh, links to sound recordings I'd taken behind my home on both Monday, um, September 30th, and Thursday, October 3rd. I sent these links because the noise was unbearably loud. And I don't mean defining unbearable as annoying. I mean impacting the ability to sleep. And this, as a consequence of that, um, I had a hard time functioning during the day at work. And as a um, single breadwinner of the household, that really concerns me. I've done everything I can to mitigate the noise myself in my own home. I've put in earplugs. I have put on fans in the house. I have moved to other rooms trying to get away from the noise. It's my understanding what GREC has informed us is that they are in the process of waiting for reports and analyses of how they can mitigate the noise. But I have some questions. Um, okay, well, when? You know, will you, you know, the reports will tell you options. Will you follow any of them? How long will that take? What if you don't take them? What if the plant sells before you take any steps? Meanwhile, I can't live like this. As a friend said to me yesterday, for some of us, our homes are our single largest investment of our lives. That's my 30-year contract. Um, you know, if I can't sleep, it risks my job. If it risks my job, it risks my home. And I think you can kind of follow along from there. So I just ask you if you'll please help us stop the noise 
before there are any environmental casualties from this GRAC plant. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioner, Mayor. My name is Lynn Koyas. I'm a 36-year resident of the Oaks of Hague since 1977. I am one of the casualties of this lovely biomass. As you can hear in my throat, I have just recently been diagnosed with bronchitis, and for the first time in my life, I'm on an inhaler because the massive amount of haze from the particulates that is cloaking my neighborhood not only was there a reclaimed water line put down 441 that ran to the defunct Turkey Creek Golf Course, you guys permitted the surveyors, Kasohun and Woolpole, to put a brand new water line <coughs> right through a historic neighborhood with protected lands on an expired permit, two years for endangered species, but nobody brought a new permit to value. Now you have provided water to the Dollar General site and the proposed public site. You demolished a 1910 home and a barn that was a commissary during the war. These were both on a historic structure survey conducted by the county in 2000. The lovely site manager for Castle Rock came out, has a site plan, and sat there and decimated trees the other day. We sat there and filmed it, it is on a video. Not only has there been a video of the water line that was provided to this site, but now there's a video of the desecration of these trees. This site plan clearly says there's over six laurel oaks that were to remain. There was a red bud to remain. There was a red cedar to remain. There was a plum tree to remain, yet they clear cutted the entire lot, took out every tree all the way to Mrs. Kelly's side fence and to the back fence of Mr. Kelly. I keep being told, oh, no city funds. Really? $246,000 was spent to Kosohune and Walpole as the surveyors for the biomass pipeline. Now they're the developers of the Dollar General. This is a travesty. You should have never allowed this. This is criminal. And we don't even have a fire hydrant. We have come to you for three decades for a fire hydrant. Mrs. Willis, God rest her soul, at 91 years old, two years ago, had a kitchen fire and put it out at 91 years old. I don't know if I, at 91, would have the wherewithal to do that. Well, we just lost her this past April at 93. She never left this planet seeing a fire hydrant in our neighborhood. After you pay city taxes and these exorbitant electric rates and you keep seeing these bonuses going on and these 6.1% increases in the salaries and you just knocked up the dental from 1,000 to 1,500. We have to give them sight. We have to give them life insurance policies, yet they can't conduct. We have this Linnell Stewart, our code enforcement officer, on site, on the video. Why didn't she tag those trees? Why didn't she put a ribbon around them? Why didn't somebody do something? This is absurd. I've been here for 15 years coming to you all, and it's the same people I keep seeing, and nothing gets changed. I keep being told there's ordinance protecting champion trees. Nothing has changed, yet you keep funding money to certain people. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to say something? Good evening. My name is Katherine Hilburn, and I'm a resident of Turkey Creek. And we have a huge problem. I'm really concerned, and I came here to, to let you know just exactly how I feel, uh, this, it, how significant I feel it is. That every, every resident of Turkey Creek is affected by that, and now we, have, we know there are other communities as well. It is loud. And it is absolutely a continuing, ongoing nuisance. It is affecting so many people in a negative way. We really need your help to get this resolved. It, and I believe time is of the essence. We don't even know what is in the particulates that are covering our, our neighborhood. And we do not feel, it does not appear that we're getting any real response 
from the city of Gainesville, not an active one that's helping us, nor from GREC. Now we find out there's an comp agreement that also gives us grounds. I think the lawsuit, I would urge you to have your counsel investigate and go forward with a lawsuit to stop this because we're all being harmed. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Carol Thomas. I'm a citizen in the city of Alachua. I sometimes wonder what that citizenship is worth. This evening, earlier, I sat in the chamber when there was a discussion uh, about um, the property values being uh, going down uh, because, well, what it was, it was a discussion on sex shops and uh, the placement of sex shops at the gate, the gateway, I guess, down here and concern um, about the effects of sex shops in neighborhoods and communities on property values. And I sit here and I listen to the citizens of Turkey Creek and Haig about what's happening to them and what is gonna happen to their property values, I mean, property values and their sanity and their health. And I think that I'm urging you to file that nuisance lawsuit demanding an injunction uh, for the operation of that, that plant down there. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, Hi my name is Mariana Campa. Of course, I live in Turkey Creek also. I've lived there quite a long time. I'm here to say that who is, who is our protectors if it isn't the city of Alachua? We live in the city of Alachua. We look to you to be our protectors. Who else is there to protect us? Who else is there to protect the citizens of Alachua? Thank you. Anyone else? I want to thank everyone for their comments, and I appreciate it. And um, we have another opportunity at the end of the meeting, which we only have one more item here on the uh, on the item. Uh, so, uh, if you didn't get a chance now, we're going to go to um, agenda items: the uh, compliance with State Bill 50, Florida Statute 286.0114. Ms. Rush. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, would it be, is it okay if I stay here, or would you like me to go down front? No, that's fine. Okay, Speak thank you. Speak into the mic real close. I will be happy to. Um, effective October 1st um, is Florida Statute 286.0114, which has commonly been referred to as Senate Bill 50. Uh, during the... Tw 2013 legislative session, Senate Bill 50, which deals with the opportunity to be heard on a proposition before a board or commission meeting was passed and codified as Florida Statute 286.0114. It was subsequently signed into law and became effective October 1st, 2013. The city of Alachua already has in place commissioner's rules and of procedure, which allows citizens three minutes to comment on the subject of choice at two separate times during a commission meeting. However, the new law contains some additional requirements and applies to all city board meetings along with commission meetings. The new law did not define a proposition. It was not defined in anywhere in Chapter 286. I couldn't find that it was defined in the definitions in the front of the Florida statutes. So I went and looked it up in Black's Law Dictionary, which is a reference book that is used for looking up legal terms. In Black's Law Dictionary, when you look up motion, it refers you to parliamentary law and defines it as a proposal made in a meeting in a formal form suitable for its consideration and action that the meeting or the organization for which the meeting is acting take a certain action or view. I put in the back up there the definitions of proposition and motion that I found in Black's Law Dictionary. There are a lot of different um, communities that did not have rules of procedure. The city of Alachua already had rules of procedure. So what I went back and did in order to make sure that the city complied with this rule, as I went to paragraph, page six, and that's under rule nine, 
which talks about what the presiding officer is supposed to do. And we simply add it as follows, because then there's a laundry list starting at A, B, C, D. When you go to the next page, 7, E, F, and we put in a new J to specifically comply with the requirements of the rule. And to insert at paragraph G that it would be the presiding officer's responsibility to make sure that the public is given a reasonable opportunity to be heard on a proposition before the city commission as provided for under Florida Statute 286.0114. Each individual shall be allotted three minutes to address the commission in the manner described in Rule 21E, unless otherwise provided for by law or regulation. If groups or factions of a group wish to have their opinion on a proposition be expressed to the commission by a representative, a paper containing the names of the individuals, groups, or factions, the name of the representative, and the proposition they wish the representative to address shall be provided to the deputy city clerk representative prior to the beginning of the meeting. When the proposition is opened up for public comment, the representative shall advise the commission of the names of the groups or factions whose opinions are being expressed by the representative. The representative shall be allotted 15 minutes for presentation unless otherwise provided for by law or regulation. The city of Alachua does not require an individual to provide advance notification orally or in writing in order to express a desire to address a proposition before the city commission, including but not limited to voicing their support, opposition, or neutrality on a proposition. Nothing in this set paragraph shall preclude the city commission from maintaining orderly conduct and proper decorum in a public meeting. Then there would be a new paragraph H after that G that would read, the reasonable opportunity to be heard on a proposition before the commission does not apply to A, an official act that must be taken to deal with an emergency situation affecting the public health, welfare, or safety if compliance with the requirements would cause an unreasonable delay in the ability of the commission to act. B, an official act involving no more than a ministerial act, including but not limited to approval of minutes and ceremonial proclamation. C, a meeting that is exempt from the public by Florida Statute 286.011. That's shade meetings or executive sessions. And D, a meeting during which the commission is acting in a quasi-judicial capacity. This paragraph does not affect the right of a person to be heard as otherwise provided by law. The existing paragraph G that would then become a new paragraph I. Um, when it talks about that it doesn't apply to quasi-judicial um, proceedings, a lot of those have their own uh, laws and regulations that go along with them that would govern. Now, as I said in the beginning, that this new law also applies to city boards. So the other um, a recommended action is for the city to adopt rules for public comment on propositions during Alachua board meetings. And I'm going to go read those proposed rules. The city commission of the city of Alachua recognizes the importance of protecting the right of individuals to express opinions on matters being considered at public meetings being conducted by various boards, boards appointed by the commission. The city of Alachua liberally allows public comment at its various board meetings. However, to ensure that the city and its boards comply with Florida Statute 286.0114, the City Commission of Alachua hereby directs its boards to utilize the following rules in order to allow the public a reasonable opportunity to be heard on a proposition before the board. Number one is that the presiding officer of the meeting shall allot three minutes to each person who wishes to address a proposition being considered by the board. The individual shall address the presiding officer and all questions shall be facilitated through the presiding officer. The individual cannot yield time to another individual. Number two, if groups or factions wish to have their opinion on a proposition expressed to the board by a representative, a paper containing the names of the individuals, groups, or factions, the name of the representative to speak on their behalf, and the proposition they wish the representative to address shall be provided to city staff prior to the beginning of the board meeting. When the proposition is opened up for public comment, 
The representative shall advise the board of the names of the groups or factions whose opinions are being provided by the representative. The representative shall then be allotted 15 minutes for the presentation unless otherwise provided by law or regulation. The City of Alachua, number three. The City of Alachua does not require an individual to provide advanced notification orally or in writing in order to express a desire to address a proposition before any board, including but not limited to voicing their support, opposition, or neutrality on a proposition. Number four, the reasonable opportunity to be heard on a proposition before a board does not apply to A, an official, official action that must be taken to deal with an emergency situation affecting the public health, safety, or welfare if the compliance with the requirements would cause an unreasonable delay in the ability of the board to act, B, an official act involving no more than a ministerial act, including but not limited to approval of minutes and ceremonial proclamations, C, a meeting that is exempt from the, Florida, from the public by Florida Statute 286.011, or a meeting during which the board is acting in a quasi-judicial capacity. This paragraph does not affect the right to be heard as otherwise provided by law. Number five, nothing in these rules shall preclude any board from maintaining orderly conduct and proper decorum in a public meeting. And six, each board shall allow a specified time for public comment at the end of each meeting. Um, in here, where it specifies the amount of 15 minutes being allotted for a representative of a group or a faction, that n is a number for consideration by the commission. Um, how I came up with that number is that essentially is the amount of time that's used for special presentations and it represents five times the amount of time that is allowed for an individual right now. Um, I have seen some um, communities that have said that has to be at least four people but I haven't seen anything to give a basis for saying that number. That's why we've just said any group or a faction of the group that wants to have a representative um, speak on behalf of you know, more than one person. And um, so again, that is something that can be changed by this, that, this commission. There wasn't anything to give us a lot of, of uh, guidance on that, and I've just given you what I used as a, a rule of thumb to be able to make a recommendation to the commission. Um, the recommended action is to amend the commissioner's rules of procedure uh, to reflect the changes set forth below and uh, in the attached rules and adopt the rules for public comment for the city of Alachua board meetings to be used at all of the city's public board meetings in order to comply with Senate Bill 50, which is now Florida Statute 286.0114. And <coughs> You will see I put in the backup a copy of the statute itself. Most of this is lifted directly out of the statute to make sure we comply with all of the requirements of the statute. Um, I included in here saying that we don't include advanced notification orally or in writing because the statute says you've got to provide how um, uh, procedures and forms for individuals to inform the board that they wish to be heard. Here all you have to do is approach the podium, but just so we made sure that we addressed it, it's put in here because that's a requirement of the statute itself. The statute also says you have to designate a specific time for public comment. Commission, the commission rules have two different times, but we did make sure that in the rules that are put in for each board meeting that it says they have to have the specific time for public comment put on, you know, required in for each board meeting now. Um, as I say, we're trying to make sure that we comply with everything for the commission, but we have another set of rule, rules here for comments on propositions to make sure that they are used at all board meetings also, not just at commission meetings. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. That's going to be in our, on their agenda just like our citizens' comments. Correct. Okay. And they'll probably be putting it at the end of the agendas for each of them. It won't, probably won't be twice like we have at commission meetings, but it will be a requirement that any board <coughs> meeting has a time for citizen comment. Okay. Comments or questions? Yeah. <coughs> just a quick comment. I am, I am pleased that we are not requiring the advance notice where they have to list what they want to speak about because I think that's 
I know the Gainesville City Commission used to have that and it caused a lot of concerns. And I'm just glad that we're allowing people to, if they want to get up and speak, they can get up and speak. So I'm glad you kept that portion in there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yes, sir. Would you like to speak? Mr. Mayor, I really didn't want to speak. Um, I think, uh, thank you for your work, time, and effort on that. I will say the bad part about knowing, not knowing what someone's going to say could be misinformation uh, sometimes, and it's hard to understand and respond to at that time. Knowing beforehand what's going to be discussed allows people to gather information, make an educated decision. It's kind of, we saw that several months ago with some, some stuff where stuff was thrown in the last second. You're like, oh, whoa, got to stop or something. But um, thank you for your work on this. Thank you. Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, on Rule 10, the Rules of Order, with Robert Rules of Order, should we specify the 11th edition or just leave it newly revised? I, the, the rules the of order are, are merely a guide anyway. They okay. are not binding as rules right. for this commission. Right. So my question is, do we need to specify that it is the, thir the 11th edition or just leave it as it is? Well, that's, the rules. that's actually not part of what okay. was being brought forward tonight. Okay. Questions or comments? Commissioners? What is your pleasure on this? Mr. Mayor, go ahead. Make a motion that we amend the commissioner's rules of procedure set forth below, and reflect in the changes in the attached copy of the rules, and adopt rules for public comment for all city of Alachua board meetings to be used at all of the city's public board meetings in order to comply with Senate Bill 50 slash Florida Statute 286.0114. Second. <coughs> We have a motion and a second on the floor. Would anyone like in the audience like to motion, uh, comment on the motion on the floor? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, make sure that was the correct um, statute number on that. I think it might have been 144 instead of 114. No, it's... It, was it, it correct? It, it's 286.0114. Okay. Um, I'm happy to see this here. Um, I do have a concern about the beginning of the commission agenda and it's specifically rule 21 in your rules and procedures order of business of the meeting. Uh, it's paren C and parens approval of the regular and consent agendas. My feeling is in order to comply with this law that the commission needs to change the language in its rules and procedures to state as follows. Prior to the vote on the motion to adopt the agenda, the presiding officer shall inquire if any commissioner wishes any other items to with be withdrawn from the consent agenda. If any matter is withdrawn by any member of the commission or public, the presiding officer shall place the item at an appropriate place on the agenda for the current or a future meeting. Um, at the current time, there is no opportunity for a member of the public to address a proposition that has been placed in the consent agenda. You put a motion on the floor to approve your agenda, you vote on it. You don't take citizen comments, and I put in a request to have three items removed from the consent agenda for discussion, and I don't see them um, isolated out this evening. So by doing the consent, the approval of the agenda in one fell swoop, you are denying the public the opportunity to address the propositions that are placed in the consent agenda. I also believe that by placing the certain items in the consent agenda, you are violating your own purchasing policy, which states that any purchase in excess of $10,000 and up to $25,000, the purchasing director shall secure a minimum of three written quotations, which shall be presented to the city commission sitting in regular second, excuse me, session with a recommendation as to the suggested vendor. Currently, the items that are in excess of $10,000 are grouped into a consent agenda item the backup written quotations are listed as on file in this building somewhere. They are not presented to this commission. They are not presented on the agenda with the opportunity for the public to review the proposals and the written quotations. So I suggest you do two things, that you change the language in Rule 21 to allow the citizens to remove ask for a request for any proposition on the consent agenda, whether or not it's a purchase issue over $10,000, and that you no longer put 10,000, the purchases that exceed $10,000 on the consent agenda, that you put them on your agenda, you review the quotations, 
and you give the public the opportunity by law to address the propositions before you spend public money. Thank you. Madam City Attorney or Manager, would you like to answer that? Well, I agree that we need to, be, to review what's placed on the consent agenda. We have to see if those items had been previously approved vis-a-vis -vis any type of resolution when there was a proposition which allowed for public comment on it, but it is something that I will look at. These three items were budgeted. Yes, sir. Would you like to answer that? I, we can't hear you. Yes, all of the items on the consent agenda were approved in the budget. Okay. Uh, please. So they were approved in the budget. Okay. Anyone, please. Anyone else like to comment on the motion on the floor? Seeing none in roll call vote, Commissioner Bukhari? Aye. Commissioner Hardacre? Aye. Commissioner uh, Wilford, I'm sorry. Aye. Vice Mayor? Before I vote, one question. If we want to make changes to this in the future, then what's our procedure? We can always make changes on these rules. We just okay. bring it back and make another change. That's, that's not a problem. We wanted to make sure that we comply with this in a timely manner because this is the first commission meeting there has been since October 1st to make sure that all the meetings, there's going to be a downtown redevelopment board meeting, every, that every board is using these things and all of that. Um, as I said, we have been looking into what can go on a consent agenda and, and looking to see what has happened previously, if what is being done is, minister, is a ministerial act or not. Those are the things that we are looking at right now. Thank you, because I really would like us to go back and look at Rule 10 when we look at it again. I vote aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you very much. With that, I'd like to um, go to the second um, comments from CIS on subject choice. If you did not have a chance at the beginning of the meeting and you'd like to do so now, please do. Janie Hendricks, Turkey Creek. I just wanted to correct. Did you um, not have a chance at the beginning? I'm sorry. Now, just wait a minute. Does someone else have a chance here? Come on up. Mr. Mayor and the sure. Commissioners, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity this evening. My name is Greg Williamson. I live in Turkey Creek with my wife, Nancy. We've lived there about 12 and a half years. We live in the northeast section of Turkey Creek. Uh, it's called the Dry Creek section. It's uh, very close to where we live, uh, where we live to the uh, uh, Creek Villas, or it's called. Um, I understand back in February 2010, there was a meeting, a large group meeting held where GREC officials, the biomass plant officials, advised uh, residents in the community, not only Turkey Creek, but surrounding areas that we would not even know the plant would probably be there, it'd be so quiet. I'm, wait, I'm still waiting for that day since mid-August. Uh, my wife and I have uh, gone to the point where we're using earplugs to sleep at night. Uh, oftentimes, we still hear while we're trying to sleep, trying to go to sleep, we still hear the noise. Um, we've had to turn up the TV volume in our room, not our bedroom, but the great room, in order to hear the volume better. This is with the windows shut. Uh, down and the doors closed. Um, there has been some slight improvement over the last couple of weeks, I will say. Uh, rec officials that say that they're working, trying to get uh, the noise quieter, um, but it seems like after a month and a half or longer, that would be much improved than it is now. Uh, I wasn't going to attend this meeting because I was I have been under the weather weather the last couple of days, but I'm lying there in bed before I come here. I'm hearing the noise coming from my bedroom. Um, I like to kind of summarize what a lot of us are, are suffering out there. It's not everybody in Turkey Creek, but the ones of us that are being affected, uh, we're having um, loss of our quality of life. We're having loss of our peace and uh, tranquility. We're having loss of sleep. You 
heard about health issues. I heard uh, one individual talk about having to take uh, blood pressure medicine more. Uh, another person talked about having problems with uh, breathing. Uh, my wife and I both have had headaches that uh, we usually don't have and we have stiffness in the back of our neck and of course that leads to bickering with one another, those of you who are married. Um, <laughs> you know, we tried to open up the French doors the other morning through the back <coughs> porch. Our, the back of our house faces north mm -hmm. and so the biomass plant is less than a mile I figure to the northeast. So our bedroom and our, and our back porch faces towards the direction of the plant. We can't even open our French doors or windows to enjoy the cooler temperature. So that means our air conditioner is gonna run more during the cooler months ahead. So now we're gonna suffer a financial impact. And I'm sure others are too. And on top of that, I'm, I'm sure that our um, property values are not gonna be affected very well. But I wanna thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the, uh, the giving Turkey Creek residents an opportunity to voice their concerns. Thank you. And we're begging for some kind of assistance that you can give to us. Thank you. Good evening, Connie Canny. I'm a resident of Alachua. I was at the last meeting when a good number of people, some of them here tonight, came and spoke to the issues that you're listening to tonight. And at the end of the first citizen's comments, you waived the rules and procedures of procedure and you listened and you gave responses and people were able to come up again. And I think that anyone who needs to speak again should be able to do that. No one was responded to tonight at the end of the comments. You gave no answers to their questions. You didn't address their concerns, and you just said that perhaps this person can't come back and speak because they spoke once already. These people have sat through the whole evening, and I think it's time maybe that you responded to some of their concerns and answered some of their questions. Whether or not you, know, you have any real solutions, you need to address their concerns. Thank you. Anyone else that didn't get a chance at the beginning? Ms. Hendricks, you got something else to say? I just wanted to correct uh, some misunderstandings on some of the statistics. The number of homes we have in Turkey Creek are 1,080. Actually, 1,078, but two more will be coming online in the next few weeks. So we have 1,080 homes. And in the terms of the number of residents, it's well over 2,000. I'm trying to get an exact number, but just in Turkey Creek, you've got over 2,000 people being affected. Mm -hmm. If you go as far south as Turkey Creek Forest, where there are 456 homes, that's just homes, most of which are occupied. Hague is 55 homes. So you're start, we're starting to see already, you've got over 2,000 homes, and, and the population's gotta be at least double that. And I'm gonna get statistics from Staghorn and, and Brook Point and Whitney Park, and we'll come up with a total as to the number of homes and try to get a population. But you know we shouldn't have to be doing all this. If in fact that comp plan has been violated, then really you need to take that ball and run with it and, and, and sue the city of Gainesville. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, it's me again. Uh, I would just like to say, I was w going to the University of Florida football game, and, and I got grabbed by a couple of prominent realtors in the city of Gain, you know, who worked this whole area, and they said, you know, Frank, you've got a big expensive house out there in Turkey Creek. I hope, you know, we're going to have to disclose Johnson versus Davis. You might want to look it up. It's a stat, it's a, it's in real estate law. Y you have to disclose what is going on. Uh, I used to run an inspection business, and I used Johnson versus Davis. I've used the other different things to get, get a handle on people like Greg. I was talking to my broker out of, uh, out of New York, and he told me, he says, you know, the guy that runs Greg, this guy Gordon, has a reputation for suckering communities like Gainesville into a contract, and then when you, when you start to confront him, you're gonna find out what a kind of a neighbor is. You know, 
like a, he's like a good neighbor, but it's not my problem. I got your money. I got you on a contract. But that comp plan, that seems like that's a real viable thing. Not, and that kind of goes into that whole report that I gave you, that Turkey Creek doesn't exist or a lot of these other things. And uh, they've got their noise part pretty well covered, but it doesn't actually address it's a nuisance. Finally, you know, if you go to Atlanta and they've got highways all over the place, they've put up big walls. I personally think that maybe one of the ways, and, and again, I, I couldn't go to Gainesville today because they're sitting there talking about it. It's, it's actually comical. How to defraud the government out of a 1603 deal by forming a shell company for five years. I mean, it's absolutely hilarious. They got these attorneys there. And it's going to be, you're going to watch Hunsinger and Stanton and the rest of the guys. They're going to run New Corp and they'll find some other guys to run GRU. But it's, uh, lost my train of thought. But again, you got to look at this. Uh, they're going to they're gonna come back nasty. I mean, they got big time money. They probably have more money than all of us have, have put together. But a lot of us, we have, we have some pretty big stakes in Turkey Creek. Uh, the mortgage company, I happen to, you know, I'm not in that position. I'm retired. But I just feel for the people that have mortgages and they're paying on something and then you have to disclose, I've got a problem. And uh, then you can't uh, sell your house. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone that didn't get a chance at the beginning of the meeting would like a chance now. With that, I'd like to go on to comments from city manager and city attorney. Mr. Mayor, would you like for me to comment on the um, tree removal at the... Um, yes. Okay. Um, the commission received a notice from my office um, last week notifying them that, notifying you that there were trees, unregulated trees that were removed at the Dollar General site. <clears throat> and I'll give you a little background as to um, how that happened and for the, the public's um, also. We received um, some calls on September 25th that, uh, from complaints from citizens that there were trees um, that had been removed on the property. We did send our code enforcement officer out there and she inspected the site and found no violations at that time. Uh, about three days later, we received additional comments from citizens that um, trees had been removed at the subject property. Code enforcement officer went out there at that time along with the planning staff and inspected the subject property and found that there were nine trees that were listed on the site plan. They were all um, unregulated trees, but that they had been removed from the site. Um, we immediately notified the applicant and um, provided them an email with what the remedy for the situation would be. And that was to um, revise their landscape plan and, and put, the additional, put um, the additional trees back on um, <coughs> the, the plan. We received an email, they were very responsive, went out there immediately and, and did acknowledge that the trees had been removed. Um, they submitted a modification to their site plan through their landscape architect and it stated that the nine unregulated trees were removed and had been identified to remain on the approved um, landscape plan. The trees were all unregulated trees but they were proposed to be utilized towards the required landscaping in accordance with our LDRs. Um, the ten trees have been added to the um, plan to replace the nine that were removed so that they will be in compliance with the, with the LDRs. Um, our LDRs um, does state that an administrative approval of a minor structural material or dimensional modifications including but not limited to the relocation or sub substitution of landscaping materials, architectural modifications, minor deviations, and the size of a structure or minor, minor deviations of improvements may be granted by the LDR administrator or designee. Um, staff has reviews, reviewed the proposed modifications and they would not affect the minimum required landscaping calculations, nor would the proposed modifications result in a reduction in the number of canopy or understory trees provided on the site plan. For the proposed modifications have been found to be consistent with the standards in our LDRs and the proposed modifications were approved. 
So I just wanted to let you know that those, those trees were removed that were identified on the site plan to remain. They have replaced those with 10 additional trees and that has been approved. So I just wanted to let citizens that um, were concerned about that and obviously we were concerned as soon as we received that and, and noticed that they were removed, but that. Um, can, can I ask you to please give some courtesy I'm not talking so loud. So their site plan for their landscaping has been modified and it will have 10 additional trees from what the Planning and Zoning Board originally approved. Can I, was there any additional fees we charged them for this? There was an $800 fee for the um, modification to their site plan. Thank you. Anything else? No, sir. Okay. Madam City Attorney. No comments. Mr. Bakari. Thank you. Um, one of our residents mentioned, you know, responding to the uh, uh, folks here with their concerns to Greg uh, this evening, um, and I think that's very important. I also understood that there was no reason, not my opinion, to waive our rules, considering there was only one item on the agenda. Therefore, we'd be here quicker, and we are. Um, but I want to address something else first. Uh, as far as the trees go, I got to go out there with the big site plan, look exactly where everything was, and uh, it was a cluster of trees. If you're driving south 441, it's right on the left edge of the property. The video that was mentioned earlier, I watched that. That tree wasn't a champion or heritage oak or a champion uh, tree at all. And in fact, that tree was a part of what was supposed to be removed from the site. It wasn't a total clear cut. If you drive by home tonight, you'll see there's trees still on that property. Um, as far as proposed publics, I'm wondering where that is. I haven't heard of that. Um, it, it, the city employees got a 3% cost of living adjustment the first time in four years. Haven't had anything. And it's not 6%. I don't know where that came from. Um, and uh, you know what, the, the developer of the property didn't take care of business, they're putting trees back there. I don't like it, I wish there was something more we could do, but you know, at this point, uh, we're doing what we need to do to um, fix it. They're putting 10 trees back on to try and fix that. Um, and uh, let's see, I wanna cover some things before I get to the Greg issue. Okay, as far as the Greg deal, I spoke to a lot of the residents here from Turkey Creek uh, and, and elsewhere. Um, you know, I find myself at a loss, and um, I know that, what, what can we do? Well, we've written a letter, but we knew the letter wasn't going to do it, but that's a first step into uh, speaking with state officials. I did make contact with Greg. I've uh, sent an email out to some of you folks uh, about what Greg said. Greg told me, uh, Ms. Sims, I saw your videos, and I heard them on YouTube, and I appreciate them. Um, and what they told me was, as far as timing, two weeks, at least from my phone call, was to find out where the, exactly the sound was coming from. They know it's from their plant. They agree there's sound. And, but they're trying to find out exactly, is it coming from the stack, is it coming from somewhere else? And they hired somebody out of Virginia, I believe it was, maybe West Virginia, to come down and look exactly where that was. And then from that point forward, they would um, then, uh, would not mind, because I requested, would they mind meeting with the general public in some type of forum or uh, sit down to uh, discuss it? They said they'd be willing to after that two week period so they could come with information on how they're gonna mitigate the problems. Uh, furthermore, they stated that the, um, that uh, mitigating the problem might take uh, a month or two not knowing exactly what's going to happen. I don't like it and I wish that plant was shut down this second. Um, but I, I, I defer to uh, legal uh, counsel on what our options are and I've discussed it with our city attorney. I'll be talking with her tomorrow on what can we do, here, here are the options. Um, what options do we have? But I mean, I hear your concerns and if I could go like this and flip the switch off by walking to the back of the room, I'd do it in two seconds. And I'm sorry that it hasn't happened sooner and I wish it would, but we are making contact and I plan on being uh, in contact in light of an email that I got by, from Al today from Greg. I'll be in contact with DEP tomorrow to discuss that with them and see what they're actually talking about. So I saw me email it. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry we can't do something sooner. Mr. Hardacre. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I wish that I had an answer tonight about Greg also. I know that what small dealings that we had with them, they did show good faith, but they are a business. They're a business out to make money, so I'm not really sure where that good faith will go in the future. Uh, I've requested some information uh, from our city manager on the city possibly doing uh, some noise studies out there, and if, if need be, some other environmental studies that we ha would have as use in our city and our citizens would have use of that information. I do appreciate every one of your comments. Uh, 
I, again, I just don't know at this point what to do. They tell us that they're working on fixing some of these problems. Uh, one of the citizens mentioned putting a building around that turbine, if that would help. So we're really not sure. I know that each of us city commissioners have asked our city manager to be involved. We have sent out letters uh, stating that uh, we have that concern. Uh, I would also like to thank the citizens who caught the site plan deviations and uh, taking down of those trees. Because of that, we were able to go back out there and they have revised that. I think that the trees that they're putting back in out there uh, are even better than what was taken down on that. I'm glad also that we did charge them the additional fees for those uh, site plans that they had to do. I would, I would also like to welcome you all to Saturday out to the White Cane Walk if you've never had an opportunity or met some of the training dogs and that, that you might uh, come out to that. But I, I think I can speak for all the commissioners. We're, we're trying to stay up on this and your comments and the emails that you've been sending us have been very helpful. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first off, I happened to be coming back from the chamber luncheon uh, a couple weeks, well, I guess it was, I was coming back from some meeting up here and I actually went to the site and uh, stopped by and I saw the project director after I had never met him, but. Uh, uh, he actually got the plans out and walked the property with me and I did see the trees they had removed. One of the trees was about 26 inches around and the rest of them were all small trees. So I did not see any large trees removed other than one was fairly large, but the ones that were left there and it was, they had not cleared it yet, all the trees were still there. So they were all very small, uh, very small trees as far as the diameter of the uh, trunk goes. So. But uh, again, uh, I uh, was there, spoke with the guy. Of course, I can't speak for the commission, so I just said, I can't speak for the commission. I said, but you need to address this thing immediately. Of course, I think uh, my city manager, Kane's staff, already been in touch with him anyhow. So, so it was not like that I was doing anything different because uh, they'd already responded to the city manager's direction. So but I actually did observe those trees personally. I only saw one big one, and I, well, I consider it to be big. The rest of them were all small trees. I was just lucky I drove by at that same time, I wouldn't have known that. The other thing, uh, I, I have to be totally transparent, obviously I'm a resident of Turkey Creek. Uh, I'm very concerned about uh, a number of issues people brought up tonight, but I, I think an interesting thing that's brought up tonight, I don't say that we need necessarily, I know, can we direct the attorney without a motion to look into the idea about the legal ramifications I, of I the think she's pretty well, well aware of that right mm -hmm. now. But is, does she have directions to do that or not? I mean, it's because. Mr. Mayor, I'll be happy to direct that. If you, if you want to, take, to look into take, taking legal action against Greg, if you want to look into trying to file a motion for an injunction, I suggest that you acquisition that we get, that you hire separate outside counsel to do that. It will take a substantial amount of time, effort, labor. You're going to have to have some documentation to be able to show that you have a substantial likelihood of prevailing on the merits. You're going to need evidence and affidavits of exactly every single thing that you are saying is backing up your uh, need to get an injunction put in. Um, there is a substantial likelihood that you're going to have to put up some type of a bond. So if that is the action that this commission wishes to take, I, that is the means in which they need to move forward on doing it. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I wasn't asking that. I was asking her to look in a bit about the comp plan and see yeah. if they if they were um, the rest of the stuff. I understand we could be held liable, and we if we lost a suit and they got great attorneys, they just won a fifty million dollar suit against the City of Gainesville. That we I'm not talking about going that far, but as an initial step for the benefit of, of all the City of Alachua is that if you know if we looked into as far as the City of Gainesville and the comp plan issue. I w I, that doesn't cost us anything for you to look into that. So that's what I was referring to, Mr. Mayor. Okay. And I think that's a great idea. 
So, so, but uh, but in, in in general, like I said, it's uh, I, Mr. Brown, I do have to. I want to read something for the record because uh, I've heard, heard there's been some concerns, and I just want to make sure. I I, I received uh, comments about I'm representing the city commission because I've gone before the city of Gainesville, and I have not represented this commission at all. Sure. So I have written this letter to a to one of the uh, directors of the homeowners association at Turkey Creek, and each time I've gone before the city commission, I've voiced my concerns that as a disclaimer, I do not represent the mayor, the city commissioners, as an individual or a whole, but I wrote this letter, and I'll read it real quick. It says, thank you. Okay, excuse me, I'm sorry. Thank you for providing updates regarding your Greck facility. I assure you that the well-being of the residents of Turkey Creek as well as that of all the individuals and families who call Alanchua home will always be at the forefront of my decisions and actions as a city commissioner. However, regardless of the percentage of population of a particular area or subdivision in Alachua, I will continue making decisions based on legal, ethical, and moral considerations on behalf of all of Alachua's residents. And then I did mention about the uh, letter we did last month, so I won't read that. As a reminder, because of several individuals have, have asked me about the position of the Alachua City Commission, Regarding the Greg facility, I do not and cannot speak officially or unofficially on behalf of the mayor and or the other members of the Latra City Commission away from a previously announced public forum. On the other hand, as a Turkey Creek resident, I will stand firmly with my neighbors in speaking out against Greg's lack of respect for our individual rights. Due to Florida's sunshine laws, I am confident you understand I must remain very careful and forever diligent when speaking in unison with my Turkey Creek neighbors not to give the impression that I am representing the views of the mayor or other members of the city commission as I stand with all of you in our hour of tribulation. It's quite simply the legal, ethical, and moral thing to do. Thank you for your unparalleled passion and tireless efforts regarding real and potential environmental issues affecting all of us who live in close proximity to the biomass plant. I applaud you and the many people who are exercising their right of free speech and holding Greg accountable. So when I went for the city of Gainesville's commission twice, that's my free speech and I have every right to do that. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Mr. Mayor. Can I, if I may, just kind of respond? I've seen where Commissioner Wilford has said some things and gone out there. And um, whether you're doing it as a resident or not, I think you have every right to say, you know what, I am a commissioner. I do represent the people of Alachua. Mm -hmm. You can make it a personal opinion, but I have no problem with you representing yourself as a city commissioner representing, representing the citizens. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Sure. That's all. No. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Thank you to the citizens who have come out tonight and who came to our meeting, who attended the meeting last time. My heart goes out to you. I can imagine if you're, you're not sleeping. Thank you for the emails, the phone calls, and we must move quickly on this matter. We must. And if we need our staff and our city attorney to look into the comp violations that were shared tonight, whatever aspect we can move forward to help our citizens, we must do it and I admonish this um, commission to do that. Um, I'm sure it must be very frustrating. You call GPD, they tell you to call Alachua police, and it's like everyone's passing the buck. So we sit here in these chairs to represent you. So we must move forward on this, and whatever we can do to help you, our city staff, I'm here to do it. On a happy note, today at Zaxby's had their ribbon cutting. Mm -hmm. So if you love chicken, go up to Zaxby's and have some chicken. <laughs> Checks in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and that's true of, about what, what Mr. Wilford said. First and foremost, each and every one of us up here is a citizen of Alachua, and you have the right to speak out. And I don't want any of us to ever forget that. And that includes all of our staff and everyone. Um, uh, I, I can't express my frustration enough for what's going on there. Uh, and it's gone on for uh, quite a few years. And I think that uh, from the very beginning, people fell asleep at the wheel. And uh, what um, I, I don't know what the legal ramifications the city of Alachua can do. It's a very, very serious type thing that we need to look into and not go willy-nilly into. Um, I have talked with, uh, like I've told people, uh, at least five of the seven city commissioners, Mr. Mr. Uh, Russ Blackburn, I've talked to the county commissioners, uh, the county att uh, attorney and the county um, uh, manager. There is, there is much concern as they can 
but I, I, the county, I think, is somewhat limited on their actions also of what, what they can do. I think the city commission of Gainesville and GRU and GREC are really the people that need to take action. And I, I, I'm not sure exactly how that's all right. Your, your letters have spurred more action than, than anybody else in the whole three years this has been going on. It, it really has. And it's made them actually think, and it's made them uh, uh, go into action, um, which they never did before. They just kept going right along. So I, I appreciate all those, those letters you've done. But we will, we will once again, at least explore the possibilities of what legal ramifications we have at our disposal. And the other, the other, what happened earlier uh, about Haig and whatnot, I, I, I hate the thought of those trees being coming down. Um, but, uh, and the, the house that was talked about, um, that was being used for illegal drug activity. There were uh, vagrants in there and, and illegal activities going in there. The people from uh, down in Miami that owned that piece of property were contacted, and the only thing they did in there was they took down that house so more, no more legal activity could be uh, occurring in there. And I think that's a really good thing. Um, I also uh, had heard, too, that there was, um, I kind of got admonished for not knowing this, but um, there was a public going in there. And I don't take that lightly, but I've heard that a lot. But I think, I personally think that um, Anybody that's clearing land in the city of Alachua or Gainesville or no matter where they may be, if someone asks them what they're going to do, they're going to tell them Publix is coming. And uh, I, I have to smile when I hear that, but um, I've heard that so many times I, I can't tell you. So um, I don't believe there's a Publix coming there, but um, I think that came from the land clearers. And once again, um, we will try and do everything we can, and I promise you that. With that, motion to adjourn, Mr. Mayor. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor, say aye.